Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimple the Limp and it is time. It is finally time. I am here with Core Space. I am finally ready to play it. The new Firstborn edition of the game. Got my guys all painted up, got our terrain set up, got our mission set up, all this cool stuff. We're ready to get going. All right, so I'm gonna have one camera that I'm holding so I can get in, zoom, and show you guys stuff up close, and then I'll have one overhead to get the overhead picture. I'll flip back and forth between them. Uh, first things first, I gotta explain a couple little rules tweaks that I've made, so watch this part of the video. Otherwise, I'm gonna make fun of you in the comments if you're like, no, that's not what the rule says, and I explained it here where I you know, made a few little changes. Also, if you're interested in the story of why my guys are here, make sure you watch the prelude, uh, prelude uh, that I did on the game. It explains the story up to this point because this is like the third, fourth, fourth, fifth, something like that mission I've done with this crew. So they've had a lot of stuff going on with them. All right, one of the changes I made is I'm not using the original dashboards. You can tell because there's only one row of uh, pegs. Usually you use the pegs for health and skill points as well. Instead, these are actually 3D printed. These are resin ones, files I got online from Thingiverse that I downloaded so you can put the little tabs here for each one of the characters in the top. Has room to put all their equipment and then a spot for health on the left, skills on the right, and then you see right there a little slot where you can put in if they have any armor. Uh, that works great and the only pegs that you have to use is the ammo packs. So this is really great, takes up a whole lot less space than the usual ones, which are like three times as tall uh, as these. Now, of course, these won't automatically connect to the uh, the backpacks, which are new to Firstborn. So if I have one of those, I'll just place it next to it, kind of like I've done with these little pieces. But it does save me a lot of space and I love using the dice now. It makes it easier. I can just rotate the dice down instead of worrying about all the little pegs. Just uh, something, check it out. It's on Thingiverse if you guys are interested in it. And as an FYI, I've got some 3D printed terrain pieces as well that I painted up and threw in there, like this little display piece, stuff like that. So some of this terrain is not stuff that came with Core Space. Not all of it, most of it is core space, but there are a few pieces that are 3D printed as well. All right, so our crew is up here. That's the portal they're coming out of. When I reference the bounty hunter, that is Valayan. I believe I'm saying his name right. He's the bounty hunter that is chasing us, but he is not in just yet. We'll explain that. Here are our dice for it, which I gotta say, the Firstborn dice are a hell of a lot nicer than the original Core Space dice. They definitely upgraded that. That is a plus. And then here, if you got the Kickstarter edition, you got extra minis uh, with it, like a little reinforcement pack. The base retail version only comes with half the amount of bad guys uh, that the Kickstarter version comes with. So definitely get the Kickstarter version if you can, because it's worth it for those extra, extra minis. And then the stats for our enemies are located here. These are the three main types that we're gonna have to worry about. The drones, the liege, liege, and the iconoclast. So drones, lieges are the red looking fellas, and then the armored looking ones are these guys, the iconoclast. Now, if we do get a firstborn doohickey guy, uh, that's gonna be this tab, but there's a somnolent side and then a actual awoken side where he gets really pissy. Uh, two sides to him, but he may or may not appear in this game. All right, so I do make a few changes to the rules for just my ease of play. And that's one of the things that I've always liked about Core Space is it, it really is play at, at your own leisure. Make the changes, make the tweaks. Don't, you don't have to make my tweaks, but I do change a few things. One of which is on our combat dice, I freaking hate, I don't know why this mechanics in any game, I've always hated it, malfunctions or broken weapons or that crap, that's what this represents. I ignore that, I treat it as a miss. It is what it is. Now, to be fair though, there is a heavy attack on some of the melee weapons and I do make that a little harder on myself to make up for the fact that I am not uh, going with broken melee weapons or misfiring 
ranged weapons. So what I do on that is they have to use at least two actions. It can be, now they generally have two actions and then a third, which is called an effortless action. May, it's like a small thing. They can do a little thing, like a little small move, something like that, rummage in their backpack, nothing big, not like a, an attack or a big move, something like that. Uh, but they have to use at least two of those. So an effortless and regular action or two actions to perform a heavy attack when conducting uh, that heavy attack with the uh, the melee weapon to make up for the fact that I am not having misfires or broken melee weapons. Okay, something else that I have changed up in this is there are actually three bags of tokens. I've got one bag that has just the small size tokens. Now this is something that I do like that they change in this edition of Core Space, and that is that ammo like that is now just like a half half size instead of the square size that it was before. Uh, I always thought that was a little too big for an ammo piece. It just took up too much space when you were already limited in the amount that you can carry. And they have like a mid-sized big weapon now as well. Previously, all rifles or melee weapons were this like double size, so two squares worth, but now there's actually one that's a square and a half worth. So think of it like three quarter size. Uh, I do like that they've made those changes to kind of adjust for like a, a submachine gun type weapon. So as I was saying, I've got three of these bags. This one has small, the little ammo size, but there are other things in here besides ammo. There's like stem packs, um, health kits. There are some um, weapon mod type things that give you rerolls. There's some cool stuff in this bag. So we've got this bag, and then we also have a bag that has just the square shape size tokens. I'm using this nice double six bag that I got from the double six dice, which I love those guys, I always shout them out. And then I have a bag full of the full sized weapon tokens, all right? So this will have uh, things like the backpacks are gonna be in here, the three quarter size, some machine gun type weapons, large melee weapons, anything that would fit in a case this size is going to be in that bag, okay? So three bags, one small, one medium, one large. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because in the previous core space, there were different ways you could do searches, but it's changed up a little bit. They don't have any of the larger cases in the first board game. It's only these square cases, these little arc-shaped ones, or these right here, which will only fit the square size. So to change that up, and I added these in, the cases, but I've left them all empty because I want it completely random what I'm finding in, in any of these cases, okay? So what you can do when you're conducting a search action is you can search one of these cases that are located around, or you can search a room. So the squares or rectangles that you see around the board, you can search that location to see if you find anything. And then afterwards you'll place a search marker there to indicate the fact that you've already searched that. Now, what I've decided to do is the only place that I can get large size tokens are going to be these big cases because that's the way it was before. So I'm sticking with that, okay? If I open one of these cases, I can draw out two tokens from the bag full of big stuff. If I draw or I search one of these smaller cases, I can draw out, I haven't decided yet. I was thinking two or three because there were two or three in the other one, but I was thinking three might be too much. So I'm probably gonna stick with two. We'll see just depending on how the searching goes uh, for the rest of the stuff. But let's say at least two of the medium sized tokens, the square shaped ones out of that size bag. Now, when it comes to doing an area search, I didn't want to give myself so much information when it came to searching because the way they were kind of describing it, you would have the small little quarter size tokens and the square tokens all in the same bag. And I didn't like that because I would be able to feel when I was pulling out what size token I had touched and I didn't want to give myself that much information. So the way I've decided to handle it is when I do a search in a room, I'm going to roll a die. Just gonna roll a D6 or a double six, right? On a one to three, it's going to be a small size token. And on a four to six, it's going to be a square size token, medium size token. 
That way it will give myself complete random nature. I will be able to draw everything, you know, throughout the course of the game. And I don't have to spend all the time going through filling all these cases to search through. Whenever I hit one of those cases, I can simply draw from the bag that has that size token into it and call it a day. Actually, I think what might work for these, because they can hold up to like four tokens and it depends versus the mission that you're on, how many tokens are gonna be in there. I'll probably do two squares and one small token for the arc boxes when I search those. And maybe something similar for these. Just now that I'm thinking about it, uh, uh, two large weapons and a small token. So think two rifles, two swords, something like that, and maybe ammo or a med kit. Now, if you like my idea, you'll need at least three bags that you can separate and draw out of to make that work. But I think that gives myself so much random choice because in the medium bag, there's armor, there's pistols, there's knives, there's axes, there's uh, ammo, there's uh, attachments for your weapons, there's anything that you could possibly find. And you don't have to worry about filling all these cases beforehand. Now that is neat to be able to open the case and see what's in there. But this way you don't have to worry about setting it all up before each game. You've already got the bag, you can just pull it out, set it down, you're good to go. So when you guys see me performing search actions, and I roll, that's what I'm determining, whether or not it's gonna be a small token or a medium sized token that I get to draw just from the rooms. And then we'll draw as normal for the rest of the, the cases. Now our mission, like I explained before, my guys arrived here, they're coming out of this gate and they've got to find a way to shut down this gate before the lay-in gets through the bounty hunter. That's what this console here is for. So this place is totally alien to them. They have no idea where they are. They've got the supplies they had on them and that's it. They're gonna have to try to find a way to shut it down. The way I've decided to handle this is there are four of these arc cases, not arc, um, plinth, plinth. That's what these ones are called. One at each corner of the table, okay? And they have to search through those cases and find the one blue token in one of those. Now those I actually did load before game. There were three orange little small tokens and then one blue one. I mixed them up, secretly put them in there like I did not let myself see them and then shuffled them around for even further distribution. So I do not know which one of these has the blue token. They have to find the blue token, which is like the little key card, and then they have to get it back to the computer console and that will shut down the portal to allow them to escape before the bounty hunter gets through. But they're gonna have to fight the firstborn on top of it. I'm giving them six turns to do this. I was trying to decide a good amount. I figured six would be close enough. If they split off, they might have enough time to do it. We'll see, I'm probably not giving them enough time, but yeah, we're gonna have fun with it regardless. If by the sixth turn they haven't done it, the land's gonna come through the portal and then wherever they are in the facility, they're gonna have to escape, which is going to be this side of the board. They're just gonna have to get down to here. And I put this little Dyson reactor here just cause I think it's cool and I wanted it on the board. So they'll get down here and they'll escape the facility and I'll come up with another mission for them after this. All right, one last change that I have to address that this isn't me, this is Firstborn having different rules than Core Space did. Okay, so what they're gonna have to do is that there are patrol points and entry points on this board. So the entry points we've seen before, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there are patrol points, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're in different places. They're not in the exact same place. They're kind of similar, but I move things around a little bit. The patrol points here are the gray ones and they have to do with these drones that I just threw up here in the corner. So I'm gonna start with a couple of drones on the board. We'll, uh, we'll see how that pans out. And the way the drones operate is while we're in patrol mode, which is this first set down over here, the drones patrol around the board to all the different patrol points. And then the moment they encounter someone, they get attacked, they hear noise or grenade goes off. There's a list of things that causes them to activate. Once they activate, it automatically bumps us all the way up to the next zone. Doesn't matter if we're all the way around here at the bottom, it'll put us all the way up to here and now we're in this section. So we wanna try to avoid activating those guys. 
but until we do, they're gonna just keep going around in number order. So we've got one here at six and one here at five. So at the end of their activation, they'll scan around in the room they're in. So let's say five here, he'll scan that room. If there's no one within range, he just teleports over to six and then he scans six. As long as he doesn't encounter any anyone at any place, we stay good and we're not activated. Six is gonna jump down here to one. And one's over here, two's there. I think three's over here, three's here. Four is up over here. And then again, five's up there. The entry points are a little bit different. I kind of went back and forth with those. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six, as far as the entry points. So that's how the rest of the aliens will join in. The drones handle a little bit different. So they just patrol up until the game starts. That's a new rule actually from Core Space First Board. The one addendum I make to that is if they are attacked and they, they don't see the enemy. So let's say someone comes up from behind and smashes them with a melee weapon, either melee or a silent weapon. Can't be something that they shoot them from a distance or anything like that, but they get them in melee and wipe them out. I'm gonna count that as a non-activation. In the rule book, it says that they activate whenever they're attacked. I'm making that one change, kind of like a stealth kill. So if you can stealth kill a drone, it's not gonna cause the activation. All right, but other than that, I do believe I have hit all my talking points. Oh, I did want to mention this to you guys as well. I can't recommend these cards enough. These are the reference cards. And one of my biggest drawbacks for this game was the fact that you had to remember all the damn symbols. And it drove me friggin' nuts, especially because I have no memory. But look here. All right, so this is the hunter. This is what my captain is. So he's a hunter. He's got these skills. This is the Hunter card, and it's got all the skills that he has explained at each level. Tell me that's not perfect. So I've got one card for each one of my guys, tells me exactly what they can do. I can reference that. Also comes with the NPC activation chart. So we've got that, tells us what goes on, targeting choices they make, all that good stuff. And then some special rules that come into play with the Firstborn stuff. Uh, that is also on a card, and there are a buttload of these cards. I think it addresses every expansion up to the point that the uh, the reference cards were made. So for, I think it's like 12 or 15 bucks for the pack of cards, definitely 100% worth it. Okay, sorry, I know I talked a lot at the beginning. You guys are ready to see me play, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, actually one more thing I need to mention before I forget. They made a change in core space that it operates off of squares rather than inches, but those squares are inches. And thankfully they did include it, if you guys can see, on the little measurement stick. So it is on there. They've got little marks for each one of the squares. So this is five inches long, five squares long. And that's what they were saying to do. So instead of saying someone had a four inch move, it's got a four square move. I'm not going to worry about trying to keep everyone in an exact square. I'm just going to roughly measure it out and move them along. Personally, I think that's going to be easier and I like that method better. They can do a sprint action and move, like spend all their actions, two actions and an effortless, uh, effortless action to run as far as they can go 11 inches instead of just the usual, you know, stuff like that. And I think that's easier than trying to make sure that I've got them lined up exactly on the squares on the board. So we're going to be using inches instead of squares. Like I said, though, core space is your game. Make it your game. You don't have to play my way. You don't have to play their way. Play your way. Have fun with it. Okay, we're ready to start. We start with the hostility phase, which I have already got a peg plugged right in here. We started at zero. We're just going to see how it pans out. Uh, we're good there. We're going to go into the other step of it, which is drawing ourselves a card from our event deck. This is mainly just the base deck that came with the game. I just took all, took all the cards, shuffled them up, said good to go. The only other cards that I added into it, I think, was uh, the Bounty Hunter cards. And there was another pack, and I can't remember for the life of me which pack it was. It might be the pack for the, uh, the Chit, Bob's alien crew. I might have added those in there. 
if it references, if any of those cards reference the purge, we'll just play it off like it's the firstborn and we'll play it out as best as possible. So let's draw our first card, see what we're going to get. We have making headlines. So this is actually for the expansion that came with the Kickstarter thing. There is a group of reporters that you can actually have as part of your missions as well. Uh, find me a story. If the media team are not in play, they arrive at a random entry point. Then they move twice towards the nearest trader, stopping and interviewing them. Uh, if they move, <laughs> short range, you got to be kidding me. The media team? Okay. Yeah, we'll have the media team jump in. All right, so we're going to change up that car just a little bit. I'm not going to have them enter through an entry point since... This is an alien spot and they've come through the portal. That's the only way for the media team to have gotten here. So I'm gonna have the media team uh, spawn in up there next to the portal. In essence, they followed my crew through and now the media team is followed. I cut the media team down by one member just to try to make it a little bit easier. So, or not easier for me, these guys aren't aggressive, but I didn't wanna have a huge amount of civilians running around. Uh, this is the reporter. Let me see if I can get that zoomed in. This is a little alien reporter that we have here. And by the way, if you think these look all right, they were painted with those new army painter uh, contrast paints. I forget what they all they call them. They're special paints. So that's M. Soon. This is the reporter. Okay. He, she, them uh, has very bad stats, but uh, they're trying to do reporting. So they also come with their little auxiliary camera, and this is basically their video camera. So that's gonna record everything. So that's this little thing. It's gonna follow along with the reporter and stay in base contact. I'm gonna move them up there once I'm done showing them to you guys. So they're together and its job is to gain its little media tokens. And once it has enough of these media tokens, they try to leave through the nearest entry point. So I'll just have them after they enter here and they'll gain one token for interviewing my crew since they'll be right there next to them. And after that, I'll just have them move around randomly, kind of investigating this new alien part of space facility that they've discovered. And if they hit their max level of tokens, then they'll be able to flee out either through the portal if it hasn't closed yet, or they'll have to go through the same exit my guys are gonna have to go through. The guys also have one guard, that is Zane. He's uh, actually fairly decent. I wouldn't mind having him on my team. Let's see, that is his media side. He doesn't even get to join my team. He doesn't have a traitor side. He has just a civilian side. And it looks like he's, yeah, he's better at media. He has one more attack at range of media. That's kind of interesting, huh? So that's this fella here, Zane his cool little laser rifle there, he's ready to go. And then we also have, what's his name, Bull. And he's essentially like camera equipped guy. So he's carrying a whole bunch of crap for him, all the gear, all that good stuff, with the exception of the camera since the camera floats. But he's really cool, he's got a lot of cool weapons and his weapon is actually super awesome. But I am not giving it to him. Uh, it's a, a token that my guys could actually get. Uh, that's his prospector side and it's this side. Well, he's part of the media team, but it doesn't say media. I might switch him out because this says prospector. So I might have looked at it wrong. He might be a minor, but I know he comes with the, the media expansion. Okay, instead I decided to go with just these two, her guard and the camera, because the other two say prospector, so I might have misunderstood that, and it might be media team and prospectors. The There's mining you can do for resources in this game that you can use to craft stuff if you want to get that you know deep into it. So, you know, do that if you want to, but we'll stick with just these guys for now. So we'll have them pop up here. Actually, move this out of the way for a sec. And we'll have them appear right up here next to the portal. So just a guard and their camera. And we'll have them just do random movements after that. There we go. So I'll fling that thing back around a little bit afterwards, but there's the media team. And to keep track of it, we're gonna go ahead and give them 
one of their media tokens because they are close enough to my guys to interview them and get a token. Okay, that event took a hell of a lot longer than I anticipated. It's usually just roll a die or take some damage, but instead we got extra civilians, which is cool because I didn't have any civilians to roll for. Uh, but now we've actually got civilians to deal with. My worry though is Zane, if he is spotted or sees one of those uh, drones, he'll attack it, which means they'll activate and my guys will get screwed. All right, so we're ready for my guys' activations. Uh, and before we do, let me make sure I mention, when you see me drawing tokens, there are none of the special green tokens. This whole upper part of the sheet, that's all alien tech, alien weapons, alien gear, and all that cool stuff. There are none of those. I didn't put them in any of the search containers because my guys don't understand it. They can't get any of that stuff yet. They'll have to work on getting that in later missions. All right, so what we've decided to do is we're gonna split ourselves off. We're gonna have two go this way and have two go this way in hopes that they can try to find the key because like I said, they're trying to get to this exit and the key could be on either side. All right, I was gonna have them split, but I think I'm instead gonna have them come to the center because there is a big door on each side over here and they can split there. That way they stay together longer. Okay, so my guys are good. And you'll notice I moved two farther up. There's one behind each one of these. And that's because I moved these guys just the five inches, one full move in an effortless for each one. That way they could save their actions for searches because every other room is gonna be a single search. I'm doing this one as two. So this half as a search and this half as a search because it is such a, a big room just to try to make it a little bit fair. So each one of these guys are gonna do a search action here. So I need to roll to determine. We'll roll for, what is his name, Matt first. One to three, small token, four to six, big token. All right, you got a big token. All right, so we got our bag huh? full of all the medium sized ones. And we'll reach in there and we'll just dig one out. Give me something good. And it is armor, which is good but hold on. it is not armor I can use because my guys already have stuff that's better. So I'm just gonna leave this on the floor and it doesn't matter anyway, because Matt couldn't use that. That is people armor, not robot armor. All right, let's roll for Bob. What you getting, Bob? Give me something good. And he's also getting a medium token. All right, dig in. And there could be literally anything, weapons, gear, Ammo, health kits. All right, what do we got? Oh, that's actually not too bad, a little pistol. Let's see, hold up. Bob is actually gonna take this pistol. Because if you look, this pistol is actually just a little bit better than the pistol he started with. I gave him a little crap pistol. Rolls two dice, but it only shoots at short range. So we're gonna leave the pistol he had on the ground and exchange it for this little basic pistol, which is called, what is this, an Outland pistol? Military pistol. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's from one of the original core space sets. But at least this way he can shoot at medium range now and be able to hit something, but it's only a single die. Remember, for each shot, each attack you make, you always roll the blue die. It's the only one that has a double hit on it, so essentially a crit. But for each die after that, you can only roll the reds, which are 50% hit. So it's nowhere near as good as that blue die. Okay, so next up we have our hostiles phase, which is the firstborn phase, and they're going to activate a round and they'll scan. Actually, since he's moving over here, we'll do this one first. Six is gonna scan. He scans this little room, nobody's in it. So he's gonna go down here to one and psh, nobody there. This guy's gonna do the same, nobody's in five. So he's gonna move over six and he'll go right there. We already know there's no one in six, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do have to roll to see if we are gonna get any more drones to appear and we don't. Okay, good. Don't have to worry about that just yet. If we had a drone up here, 
unlike the other enemies, he wouldn't appear at the, the spawn end points. They would appear at the patrol points. Now, also, there are these little tokens you can use for activations. You can set them next to your guys once you've activated them. I'll probably start using them once my guys get separated and start attacking. But until that happens, I don't have to worry about it. I know which ones I've activated. And next up, we've got the NPC phase. <clears throat> these guys already started. They already did their little thing, so I'm not going to worry about moving them now since they just came in. But we'll move them on the next go round. And the way we do that is we roll this little knowledge die. It's got symbols that will tell you what they do if they got special stuff going on. But the key thing, if you guys can see that, is there's a little arrow, and that's on each side of this die. So when you roll it, if they are making a random movement, the arrow, whatever direction it points, tells you what direction they go. All right, and just like that, we've completed our first turn. Sorry, it did take us a minute, but we will be faster on our subsequent turns because I won't have to explain the special rule changes and stuff. All right, so plan is they're gonna push up past these little consoles here, which I like those. Also from Thingiverse, downloaded them, printed about real cool stuff. Split ways here, and that way they can dip around, check these two plinths, which I keep holding this one down. And then if these are empty, dip around to check those. Now, the one thing is there's a secret hatch on each side back here. You can't really see it, but it is in there. You can punch that out. And I'm not letting them know about that yet. So what I'm going to do is when they get back there, I'll have them do a search action and do some type of roll off on it. And if they're successful or maybe do a skill check, if I have one that has like investigate, I'll have to check on that then they're able to find the door and dip out and be able to get to the console quicker if the key's back there. Otherwise, they're gonna have to dip around all this way and come back around. And as you guys can see, I think I'm gonna be cutting it close with the six turns because if I try to search everywhere as I go along, let me set a token there so I don't forget it, that'll definitely slow me up because I can move these guys further, but if I do like five inches each time from the farthest guy, that's really gonna slow me down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give up on some searches and maybe just hit the search coming back, but there are so many good weapons and I need some good stuff because my guys do not have the best of weapons. Two dice is not a great attack, not against the firstborn. And that's all they pretty much have. He's got three at close range, which is good, or a short range, close range, like hand-to-hand -hand combat, he can do three, he can do three, and he can do three. He is the only one that can attack with three at range. Like I said, I did have a weapon that did five at range, at short range, but it was just so good, there was no way I could let them have that for this mission. And that was actually that weapon. They found that on the last one that I filmed, and it is such a cool attack. Five dice is such a big gun, but I had Valerian, Valerian, the bounty hunter, capture it so they don't have access to it anymore. All right, you guys stay tuned. We'll pick up and we'll see if my guys are able to escape the first board facility before they are caught by the bounty hunter or before this first born, the little pod back here, awakens and he starts attacking them. All right, you guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.